We uh, thought that we needed to take a big step in the engineering of our drivers to get to a place in performance that we really hadn't been before. We weren't sure whether we could actually provide any benefit or not. So we had some initial discussions with Alan and the team and thought, well, I think we might be able to do something there. In my mind, there was no question other than could we do it? Uh, would the people at Boeing really want to take part in a project with us? And thankfully the answer was yes. The Boeing partnership allowed us to learn more about aerodynamics than we ever knew before and make a product in XR16 that's not only highly forgiving, but the fastest that we've ever made. So in R&D, I've been here about 16 years, and you know we really pride ourselves on performance and technology and innovation, and we consider ourselves some of the experts in the field. Uh, likewise, I think Boeing sees themselves the same way. So it was uh, it was really a great opportunity for us to collaborate um, and work on this engineering problem uh, as a team. There was a gentleman who headed up all the engineering, with Mike Delaney. He thought it would be cool to have a project a low-speed project, which is a golf club going 100 miles an hour versus airplanes going four or five and 600 miles an hour. To me, this project was an opportunity to uh, do something really different. And at Boeing, I've worked on a wide range of, of aero flow physics problems, ranging from laminar flow control to trailing vortices behind aircraft um, to wind tunnel test methods and such. And it's pulling together some of that experience and scaling it to a different problem. They came in and kind of assessed our uh, aerodynamic capability and kind of critiqued our analysis methods uh, to date. And we found that we, were, we had done a lot and made uh, a number of breakthroughs uh, already in this area. When you're comparing a, a club, golf club to an airplane, it, at first it looks completely different. But in fact, both of them involve trying to optimize the flow. Uh, over the exterior surface. Well, aerodynamic drag is the big problem in the downswing. It's, it really takes away head speed that you otherwise would have, and that uh, takes away ball speed and then ultimately takes away distance. So if we could minimize aerodynamic drag, all of the other things would start to go in the opposite direction. So drag is made up of two fundamental parts. The first part is skin friction drag, and the other part is form drag or pressure drag. Depending on which type of airflow, one or the other part of the drag equation place is dominant. In an airplane, a wing is very streamlined and very aerodynamically efficient, so it's dominated by skin friction, and so they're trying to get laminar flow uh, across the wing. A golf club head is, is very different in shape because it's got a very large flat face and relatively short from front to back, so it's called a bluff body and is fundamentally very uh, aerodynamically inefficient. Obviously the, the bluff body of the front of the driver is the most significant portion of the drag you're creating with that club and, and our first put was well can we just get rid of that and that might be a good start but uh, that was out of the question of course. In an airplane when you take off and land and cruise those are three distinct segments of the flight and they're three different characteristics when you're going up and you have flaps and slats extended, when you're cruising with a clean wing, when you're coming back down with flaps and slats extended again. So those are three unique configurations they happen over the course of hours whereas when you're talking in a golf club you go you change orientations from the top of your drive down through when the club is addressing the ball that happens in a quarter of a second so it's a much more dynamic problem. Everything has happened rapidly and you can't really take this snapshot approach to to modeling the problem you have to account for the fact it's constantly changing. In our case, we wanted to make the flow turbulent by tripping it uh, as the air moved from the face of the driver over to the, the crown surface. And if we could trip that flow and make it turbulent, it would actually uh, improve the, the drag performance of the, of the head by making the air effectively stay closer to the surface of the driver uh, throughout the, the part of the downswing where the driver was moving at high speed. So when we work in a wind tunnel, we use trip steps, we use trip dots actually. Um, to simulate the real flow. When we initially started out looking at the driver, we started out using trip dots, um, knowing we have a lot of experience with trip dots. We know exactly how they work, we know exactly the physics behind them, we know why they work. If you use a trip step, it's much more manufacturable, much more easier to get consistent results, which is why we ended up with a trip step instead of dots. We were able to come down and using the robot, do some testing to see if, you know, hey, 
was the analysis you know, panning out and were we on the right track? And certainly from that we learned that we could influence it both positively and negatively. Once we knew that we had uh, a sensitivity there, we would then attempt to control it. The trip step um, is a very important part of the design of the driver, but we found that its location, shape, size and sharpness uh, were all uh, very important. They helped fine-tune our analysis methods, uh, helped fine-tune our testing methods, um, and uh, you know, learned a lot about how um, sensitive the scale and the position of these trip step features are and where the optimum location of them uh, might be. By experimentation, uh, we looked at a number of different variants and found that uh, if we could uh, make the, the feature as we wanted, right on that leading edge, relatively far forward, uh, not particularly tall in fact, and have a, a split in the middle also between the toe and the heel portion of it, then that would give us the most optimal uh, form of tripping feature for that shape of club head. Uh, that would help us to create the turbulent flow near to the surface that gave us the reduction in drag and the improvement in head speed. It was really represents a, a paradigm shift in driver design by uh, enabling us to make a very large, very forgiving club head, but retain all the aerodynamic efficiency uh, of a smaller club head. It, it's certainly uh, uh, pretty uh, um, amazing, and, and uh, I know the team, myself and the team at Boeing, are very proud of being able to contribute um, and really learn from our standpoint a lot from the experience. Uh, it's been a home run. I think what we learned from them is to continue to challenge yourself and to um, continue to redefine uh, what performance is and that uh, we can always make things better. As an aerodynamicist, I was always interested in airplanes or aerospace topics. I didn't know that we could apply this to sports or something that's in a completely different field. This opened my world view to how to approach engineering problems, not just how we're trained as aerospace engineers. It's really cool to be able to go into a store, you know, any store, and any store that sells sporting goods and say, hey, here's a golf club, I worked on this thing. And this feature here, I know why it's here, I helped design that. I think the, the final product is, uh, is pretty cool. I think we managed to have an impact, which uh, our engineers were happy about. And I think Callaway is happy with the, uh, the contribution we made as well. The fact that they are willing to openly partner with Callaway to talk about it, to use it as a way to motivate uh, some of their engineers and almost reward them. Uh, that's a pretty cool testament to uh, uh, the Callaway position and, and we're just flat out honored and pleased to have the opportunity to partner with Boeing.